everyone, Andrea here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a little bit of a book haul for you. So I'm going to go through these not too quickly but fairly quickly. If that makes any sense. Like my new t-shirt, this is one I bought on the weekend, the Elvis one. Thought I'd put it on today. So let's go through these one at a time. The first one I received, wasn't necessarily the first one I received because this is from uh, March and April is The Battered Body Beneath the Flagstones and Other Victorian Scandals by Michelle Morgan. Now, as you know, there is a full video review of this app as well as a written review on my blog, booksbooksbooks.blog, books, books if you want to check it out. Um, I received this from the publisher for a, 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 in exchange for a fair and honest review. I loved this book. So basically, this is a series of fascinating portraits of gruesome crimes, some well-known, others newly just uncovered, and the sinister characters who made up the murky criminal underworld of the Victorian era. Like their modern counterparts, Victorians knew how to love and hate in equal measure. The archives are brimming with stories of all manner of atrocity, including husbands murdering their wives, suicidal lovers, and mistresses taking revenge on their love rivals. They range from the truly dreadful to the fairly ludicrous, but mostly they have one thing in common, bloodshed and plenty of it. Dedicated to the crimes, perversions and outrages of Victorian England and the United States, this grisly book covers high profile offences, such as the murder of actor William Terrace, whose stabbing at the stage door of the Adelphi Theatre in 1897 filled the front pages for many weeks, as well as lesser known transgressions that provoked scandal around the world. Drawing on a wealth of source, of sources from archival records and Old Bailey transcripts to national and regional newspaper archives, Michelle Morgan sheds, sheds new light on supposedly well-known stories while also unearthing previously unknown incidents. And as mentioned in a review, one of those incidents uh, is, um, involves a member of her own family, which I thought was fascinating. So that's that one. Um, I got one other non-fiction book recently and that is Hollywood the Pioneers. This is all about the early years of Hollywood. Um, let me just see if I can find out who it's by. Uh, it's by Kevin Brown there with pictures from the John Coble archives. As you know, I love anything to do with old Hollywood. Um, and it actually says on here, now a Channel 4 book. So obviously there was a television series to go with this. Uh, let's see, Does it? do we have any information? Silent films are sometimes dismissed as quaint or out of date because they're jerky, scratchy, quality. This book and the 10th television series yeah, with which it is associated set out to show that they were in fact beautiful as well as vastly entertaining works of art. Kevin Browner with the help of John Coble and his unique collection of early stills recaptures the legendary days of filmmakers like Cecil B. DeMille, King Vido, Eric von Stronheim and W.D. Griffiths and of stars like Garbo, The Barrymores, Gloria Swanson, Keaton, Chaplin and Valentino. The early days of Hollywood uh, must be among the most adventurous, extravagant and triumphant that the world of entertainment has ever known. From the first tentative essays of a few bold innovators, Hollywood blossomed into almost overnight into a major industry, breeding millionaires and bankrupts, making outrageous demands on those who served it, producing those early years some of the supreme triumphs of the movie maker's art. Hollywood the Pioneers tells the story as never before. Kevin Brownlow, who with David Gill directed the te Thames television series, Marshall's his great knowledge of the subject with lucidity and wit. The photographs, almost all taken from originals and many never seen before, are dramatically beautiful. This book, which anybody under interested in the cinema or who has seen the television series which it is based, will wish to acquire and cherish. Now, there are lovely photographs in here. Um, I haven't read this yet. I haven't had a chance to look at it, really, um, just because I've got well over 100 physical books to get through, but I'm really looking forward to this because... Oh, somebody's actually pressed, I wondered why it wasn't closing properly, some flower petals in the middle of this. This I got from Amazon Marketplace. So yes, and yeah, so some more pictures. So I'm going to really look forward to doing that. Again, this is probably one I can just dip into as and when. I have the next three Stephen King books uh, that I will be reading for the Stephen King 2018 Readathon or read along. Um, the current one for April, which is The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. So um, let's have a look at what this one's about. The world has teeth and it could bite you with them any time it wanted. Trisha McFarlane discovered this when she was nine years old, lost in the woods. 
In her panic to get back to her family, Trisha takes a turn in that leads deeper into the tangled undergrowth. At first it's just the bugs, midges and mosquitoes, then comes the hunger. For comfort she turns to her walk to tunes her Walkman into broadcast of the Red Sox baseball games, the performances of her hero, Tom Gordon. As darkness begins to fall, Trisha realises that she's not alone. There's something else in the woods watching and waiting. So I am currently reading this, I'm really enjoying it. So you know me, I love my Stephen King. Next, I've got Finders Keepers, with sec which is the second book in the Bill Hodges trilogy. Um, 1978, Morris Bellamy is a reader so obsessed by America's iconic author John Rothstein that he is prepared to kill for a trove of notebooks containing at least one more unpublished novel. 2009, Pete Sanders, a boy whose father was brutally injured by a stolen Mercedes, discovers a buried trunk containing cash and Rothstein's notebook. And 2014, after 35 years in prison, Morris is up for parole and is hell-bent on recovering his treasure. Now it's up to retired detective Bill Hodges, running an investigative company called Finders Keepers, to rescue Pete from an ever more deranged and vengeful Morris. Finders Keepers is a spectacular suspense and it is King writes about how literature shapes a life for good or bad forever. So yeah, I enjoyed the first um, Hodges book, so why not? And finally, uh, Stephen King Thinner, which was one of the ones he published under the name of Richard Bachman. So we are trying to get through the, notice how small these ones are compared to the ones we read last year, which were huge. I don't know. So, uh, Thinner. The old gypsy man barely whispers the word. Billy feels the touch of a withered hand gentle on his cheek. Billy Halleck, prosperous if overweight citizen, happily married, shudders, then turns anglery away. The old woman's death has been none of his fault. The courts have cleared him. She just doubled in front of his car. Now he simply wants to forget the whole messy business. Later, when the scales tell him he is losing weight, it is just what the doctor ordered. His wife is pleased, as she should be, but thinner. The word the man, the old man's curse, has lodged in his mind like a fattening worm, eating at his flesh, at his reason, and with his despair comes violence. So, ooh, classic king. Next is um, the uh, Vinyl Detective book two by Andrew Cartmel. This one's called The Run Out Groove. I've already read this one, so you'll see that in my April wrap up. Uh, so this is book two, book three is out in May, and I've got that on pre-order, so I'm hoping I will get that read in May as well. Um, uh, this one says, his first adventure consisted of the search for a rare record, his second the search for a lost child, specifically the child of Valerian, lead singer of a great rock band of the 1960s who hanged herself in mysterious circumstances after the boy's disappearance. Along the way, the vinyl detective finds himself marked for death at the wrong end of a shotgun and unknowingly dosed with LSD as a prelude to being burned alive. And then there's the grave robin. So I enjoyed the first one so much I had to get the second one. I, I really enjoyed this one. I don't think it was as funny as the first one. The first one was very, very funny. Now my battery's going so um, I'm just going to change that and I will be back with the rest of the books. Okay. I'm back. Just as I was uh, changing the battery, somebody decided to wake up from their nap, didn't you? Hey? Which is fine. So I'm just going to pop her over this side. And we'll look at the last two books. We've only got two books to go. Yes, we have. So the next book is called The Boy I Love by Marian Husband. This one is a compelling and secret love story set in the aftermath of World War One. Hmm. It, so it's November 1919. Wall hero Paul Harris returns from the trenches and finds himself torn between desire and duty. His secret lover, Adam, awaits him, but so too does Margot the pregnant fiancé of his dead brother. Set in a time when homosexuality was the love that dare not speak his name, Paul has to decide where his loyalty and his heart lie. Well, that sounds very interesting. Now, this book was a freebie. Um, my partner, Paul, my boyfriend, went into um, Octavo Books uh, during his lunch break the other day to have a look at the books, picked up a book for me, and this was uh, free for buying, a, spending over five pounds. And the book he bought me, the book he bought me, was the new Jodie Taylor, an argumentation of historians. So I actually got this last Wednesday, it only came out Tuesday. I actually finished reading it on Tuesday. And um, 
yeah, I was very excited. It's also a signed copy. Um, he actually went into the shop while she was there. He didn't know she was there at the time and picked up one of those copies she literally just signed. They were hot off the author's pen. So, um, Argumentation of Historians is book nine in the Chronicles of St. Mary. You getting hungry? All right, we'll do you some food in a minute. Just getting hungry. Um, and so this one says, they say you shouldn't push your luck. Max gives her own luck a massive shove every day and it's only a matter of time until luck pushes back. January 1536, the day of Henry VIII's infamous jousting accident. Historians from Met St Mary's are there in force, recording and documenting and arguing, obviously. A chance meeting between Max and the time police leads to a plan of action and it's one that will have very serious consequences, especially for Max. Her private life is already more than a little rocky, but with Leon recovering and Matthew safe in the future, there will never be an opportunity to bring down Clive Ronan once and for all. From Tudor, England, to the burning city of Persepolis, and from a medieval siege to a very nasty case of 19th century incarceration. What's the matter? Max is determined that this time he will not escape. So that's the last book on my book haul. As you can see, I'm very, very excited to receive that book because they are my favourite series and Josie Taylor is my favourite author since the passing of the fantastic uh, Terry Pratchett. She's the only one who can live up to him with, in, in respect to the comedy value. So those are the books I've read. If you've read any of them already, let me know in the comments below. I will also leave you links to each book in the description where, they, where I can. If it's an Amazon link, um, please note that I am an Amazon affiliate, so I will receive a small commission if you purchase it via that link. And that goes for Amazon UK and Amazon in the US as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I am going to make little Peanut here a bottle and make sure she's okay. And I hope to see you all soon. Bye now. She's my girl. Who's my girl? She's my pretty girl. Yes, you are. Come on now.